Greetings, greetings, greetings. Family, friends, and the world. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Oh, today is Fight Fire with Truth, or shall I say tonight. We're in the second night of the week, which is uh, the night after Sunday, which is really the night before what we call Monday. But uh, this is what, what the world part is, is Sunday night, but this really the night before uh, Monday. And uh, this is called Truth, uh uh, Fight Fire with Truth. Fight Fire with Truth. And tonight is, this is August 25th, August 25th, 2024. And uh, we're here tonight. Uh, I didn't get a chance to put the, uh, well, actually, I put everything up before. Uh, I came up with the uh, concept of what we're going to be speaking on tonight. And we mainly going to be speaking on family structure. Like my wife just made food, so I'm about, I'm about 15 minutes uh, after the hour of 9, 9 p.m. Uh, this in the, uh, in the night. And uh, about 15 minutes uh, late getting started. So we just got to eat dinner. And as we sit down at the table, we just sit down talking about some family matters, matters, and family structure. So, and we just think about a lot of people need to understand more about family structure as well. You know, many of us, first, let me get through. We're on YouTube uh, for part one and part two, YouTube and Instagram. Uh, we're on YouTube at Michael the Juice Heron. That's M-I-C-H-A-E-L space T-H-E space J U I C E space H A R R I S. We also on that TikTok at Michael the Jew Harris as well, but it's condensed. And also we're on Instagram. The Instagram is L K H Y Y M underscore the Jew. That's L K H Y Y M underscore T H E J U I C E. Uh, we also have a uh, TikTok that's Lakine or L K H Y Y M underscore that you thank you baby underscore the juice as well uh, on TikTok and also we're on Zoom live and what we do if we use Zoom for the full uh, for the full video for full segment I have you want to say it but we're on Zoom and we transfer from Zoom to YouTube which is still Michael the Juice Harris separated. And also we transform it to Rumble and Patreon. So that's what we do the uh, Zoom for at this moment in time, unless we use it for something else, but I do have all information. And um, I just wanted to share that. So just sharing that, these are the platforms that I'm using and that I'm on. And I'm also on Facebook as well. My Facebook is Michael, and Mikael, should I say, M I apostrophe C H A E L space H A R R I S. That's uh, that's me on Facebook as well. It's my new Facebook page. Pretty soon I will be broadcasting on Facebook as well. Once I'm in 60 days, so you have to be in 60 days before you can get start going there live. So, other than that, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. I'd like to uh, say greetings to everyone and uh. Um, what we're getting ready to do, we're going to a prayer. We are going to prayer. After we go into prayer, we're going to play the theme song for tonight, which is Keep It to Yourself. And then we're going to go into family structure. That's what it's going to be called tonight, family structure. Like I said, I had everything set up just before I went to go eat. And then as me and my wife were sitting down at the table, we started talking about certain things according to the family. So I think this would be a lot of uh, a good information to bring tonight because we're going through a whole new era things are changing and we need to share information with each other to build our family and bring our family together as a structure and um you no know, and as a unit so other than that bliss be thou father of the universe that bring forth all living creatures forth from the earth bliss be thou father of abraham isaac and Yaakov. This be the Father of Israel. This be the Father of 12 tribes of Israel. Thank you, Father, for all you've done, been doing, and plan to do. We ask you to keep giving us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, life, health, and strength, 
food, shelter, and clothing. Let us be happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, and prosperous in all that we do. We ask you to keep leading and guiding us that we can help lead and guide others in your knowledge, your your word, your ruach, which is the spirit, and in your way. We ask you to keep us in every way. We ask you to forgive us of any sins that we have done against you, your ruach, which is the spirit, and also your word. We also ask you to forgive us, our ancestors, and our forefathers for the, the sins that we have done against you, your law, your word, your ruach, and uh, lift the the spirit of deep sleep from off of us that we may see and, and uh, adhere to your glorious light, which is the spirit. We thank you all for all these things, Father. And we ask you to keep leading and guiding us that we help lead and guide others, as well as we ask you to keep us in every way, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, financial, or spiritual. And in all these things we pray, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say again, Mike. What can of beans? Oh, most king. All right. I like I when like, I like get a little bit of information out of it. This is one of my tracks, one of my first tracks. That's when they were babies. Jacktown is Jackson, Mississippi. That's why I was there at the time. And now, this is my, my, my sister's uh, favorite team. So she gave me this shirt. And uh, I decided to wear it tonight. My sister, Irene Lewis. Irene Tyler, that is. She used to be a Lewis. She's a Tyler now. Other than that, hope everybody's doing well tonight. I ain't played this in a minute, y'all. I haven't done uh, Fight Fire with Truth in some time. Come on, y'all. Help me out. Help me out. Help me out. Keep to yourself. Keep to yourself. Keep to yourself. Keep to yourself. Let me tell you, we're going around town. People are always trying to put me down. People are always talking this and that and don't even know the real fact. They only ask going on before they start talking stone. People are always trying to talk quick. They always trying to be slick. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, 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 keep to yourself. Now in this song, I need audience participation. So when I when I say my my phrase, I have I would like for you to say keep to yourself. So I'm like say a little something. I ask you to say keep to yourself. Let me tell you what I found around this little crazy town. Something from me to you, and something I like for you to do. Crack, come on, keep to yourself, smack, keep to yourself, smoke, keep to yourself, dope, keep to yourself, lying, keep to yourself, cheating, keep to yourself, stealing, keep to yourself, killing. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself, keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Come on, keep to yourself, fuss. Keep disillusion. Keep to prostitution. Keep to yourself, gossip. Hatred. Disrespect. Come on. Premarital sex. Come on. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. 
Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to pick up the Bible and read it too. The more you read, the more you learn. Because we're all really God's son. It gives us a mind to turn, wisdom and knowledge. We must learn. On getting closer to the Lord, you see the commandments. It's the way to be. But all that other stuff in the streets, keep to yourself for you and me. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, keep to yourself. Keep to yourself, 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 keep to
Matthew 5, 19 states. And this is what people don't realize. See, things can be said, but people don't catch it. And it's right in our face. A lot of times things are said, it's going on right there, but people don't see it because they're blind to the information. But in Matthew 5, 19, it states, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, whoever you are, one of these least commandments, and shall, this is the key, this is your Christianity, and shall teach men so. This is your Christianity. If you, not only if you break them, if you're teaching people to break them, your pastors, who I actually shared uh, last week, Jeremiah chapter 23, and, and, false, and false prophets, which is false pastors, I shared last week, and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And people don't even understand and only can't even see and can't even comprehend that by being the least in the heaven, you're not coming back. See, that's called the second death. You're not coming back. The people had the first death, which is from this body, from this body. That's the first. The second death means you ain't coming back. Or, the, or let me just rephrase that because this kind of hit my mind. The first death is when you're waking up from the old you to the new you spiritually. That's the first death. That's when you've met your visitation from the Father. You've changed your life. You've changed your life spiritually and physically and mentally. You've changed your life from the old ways, from the ways of the world, to the spiritual ways. That's the first death. The second death is when you leave from here, and it all depends on if you're coming back. That just hit my mind. If you're coming back, the Father's going to put your spirit back into another body. And I'm going to hit that for you in a few seconds. After I hit you, I'm just going to do 19. I ain't going to go to 20. I'm just going to hit 19 because I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes just like I did last night to share with you what I mean by putting your spirit back into another body, which is really being reincarnated. And this is the point of what it's saying right here in verse 19, Matthew 5, 19. Whosoever therefore shall, <clears throat> whosoever shall therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. This earth is the kingdom of heaven. This earth is the Father's footstool, which is the kingdom of that sits in heaven. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of the Father is within you. The kingdom of the, the, the universal consciousness is within you. But you have to want to change. All right? Now, but, second half of verse 19, but whosoever shall do and teach them, talking about what? The commandments. Whosoever shall do and teach the commandments, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Great meaning you coming back to do a work, no matter what work it is. You're going to be great. You're going to have abundance coming to you because the Father promised it. He said, after 400 years, then I would judge that nation. And afterwards, meaning after the time, not only at the time of the judgment, but the time of the separation. Like the separation is going on right now. Either you're going to do the Father's will, the Creator's will, or the universal consciousness will, being here, or when you get out and when, when the Father done with you, you gone. You have time to change and repent and turn back to the Creator by doing His laws and His ways and His will. And allowing the Spirit to come upon you to be one of the righteous in the kingdom. The doors of the kingdom is through you, through the knowledge of the Father, through his word. So that was 19. One more time before I go to Leviticus, uh, uh, Ecclesiastic. I had to make sure I said it right this time. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, which is, y'all know Christianity teach that. We ain't under the law no more. We under grace. We ain't under the commandments no more. We under grace. But you know you ain't supposed to be out there laying with nobody else's wife. You ain't supposed to be out there laying with nobody else's woman. You know that. You know you ain't supposed to be murdering. 
you know you ain't supposed to be murdering, which is killing without a cause. You know what I'm saying? All oh, and, and you're lying and being deceived. All these things you already know you're not supposed to do, but you're going to say we ain't under the law no more. Doesn't that sound stupid, ignorant, and strange? Mm -hmm. You're going to say we ain't under the law no more, but you're going to say you know you ain't supposed to do these things. Now, you know something? I'm going to be, I'm going to be outright real, outright real quick. I'm going to be outright real quick. I'm going to be outright real quick. This is, just hit my mind, so. Let's just say we got three Christians, right? Three Christians. Two are married to each other, right? A man and a, a, man and a woman, they didn't got married, according to the system that is. They didn't got married, right? So the woman said, well, honey, I'm going to be home a little late, right? You know, I'm going to be home a little late. And, 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 and let's just use the work here. Matthew, Matthew at home, he waiting on his wife, uh, Mary. Matthew at home waiting on his wife, Mary. She come home with John. She come home with John. John said, yeah, she was pretty good, Matthew. She was pretty good, Matthew. You got a good wife there, yeah, man. You got a good wife. Are you going to get mad? Y'all say we ain't none of the law no more. Are you going to get mad because... John brought your wife home? No, that's a don't you? No, we ain't under the law no more, remember? That's a law that the Father made in the Ten Commandments, directly from his voice to the ears of those who heard him in the wilderness. But no, we ain't under the law no more, right? But see, if you hit people like that, oh, <laughs> they won't say nothing then. That's how you catch people up when they be trying to say something that sounds stupid and they know it's stupid. Say it right here in the word. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, Christianity teaches you, you ain't under law no more. You under grace, which is when the father said in the end, verse, which is um, at the end of uh, 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 the second commandment, which is verse six. But showing mercy, which is grace, unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Why is he showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments? I'm going to give you the answer of why he's showing mercy, which is the grace that y'all were talking about. The grace that he was talking about that y'all was under was because of the third and fourth generation. Remember it says the... Uh, uh, um, I can read it. I already know that one by heart. He said, thou should not bow down. He said, thou should not worship anything. Key verse. Anything in heaven above, earth beneath, or waters on the earth. Thou should not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. And not bow down just only physically. Also means your mind. You ain't supposed to bow your mind to them. So, thou should not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, thy Yah, am a jealous father. Visiting the iniquity, the sins. Now, this is what people don't understand until you study what the Father has allowed me to see. Visiting the iniquity, which is sin, upon the fathers, upon the children. Y'all don't study like that. Y'all just read straight through it. But y'all don't understand what the words are saying. Visiting the iniquities upon the fathers, Upon the children unto the third, the Greek, and fourth, the Roman generation of them that hate me, which is the Greek and the Romans. They taught you away from the Creator. They came up with all the Greeks in the Greek Empire, they came up with all these different deities. Dionysus or Dionysus. That's one I believe has the two faces for. Uh-huh. Oh, I thought you said that was Mike. Uh, the two faces for laughing and crying, like for acting and stuff like that, which my wife, she had did that research on that about the Romans love theatrics. That's why we have television the way we do. We're so prone into it, not even realize that it may be a curse upon us as well because we're so into the movies and stuff like that. We were born in. But not only that, Nike, which is a shoe. Look up Nike in the Greek, the Greek God. It's a Greek god called Nike. Mercury, Aphrodite, 
uh, uh, Zeus, Apollo, you know, all these different deities, Ares, and all these different deities in the Greek culture. Then you got the sororities and fraternities under, I'm Greek. Don't they say that? I'm Greek. See, now we have to, we have to kind of swift, we, we're going through family structure, but we got to understand what has taken us out of the family structure first. And read the why I was just sharing with you, Matthew uh, 5 and 19. So now you got the Greek. Now we went into the fourth generation, which everything boiled down to mainly one man. One man is who? Jesus, which is a, a figment of your imagination that was given to you by the Romans. We all know that he's supposed to be Caesar Borgia, whatever his name is. But they lied and said his name will be Jesus, who supposed to came and died for the sin. All oh, that's a lie. But the people don't want to accept it as a lie. You've been into something, not you, whoever's listening, but for you who, uh, who don't know or do who do know. Y'all been into something for so long, y'all can't even, y'all don't even want to escape from it. Y'all don't even want to, y'all better check out uh, um, uh, Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Yup. Isaiah chapter 59. Read it. Check it out. Study it. Y'all are in sin and don't even realize how deep y'all in. Isaiah chapter 59. Check it out. I just give me, I'm giving y'all pointers. I, I shout out scriptures because it's stuff that needs to be said like yesterday. It was meant for me to say Psalms 113, even though I was looking for Psalms 133 for my experience. But it was meant for me to put that out there for somebody to see and hear. So when I'm sharing scriptures and I'm putting out information, y'all need to go check them out because it's not me doing it. It's the spirit within me that's flowing through me to share the information. No different than what I'm, at, I'm saying and sharing right now. So the third and fourth generation was the Greek and the Roman Empire of them that hate me. Them is the Roman Empire, which is of Esau. And y'all, a lot of people can't see it. The third, fourth generation of uh, the, the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, which is Esau's kingdom. Remember, Esau is going to be great in the world first. By the blessing of his father Isaac in, uh, uh, in Genesis chapter 27, verse 39 and 40. But we was blessed first because it was prophesied for us to get blessed in, in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 25. When Rebecca was going through a certain situation when she was pregnant. And the father said, the almighty said, the universal consciousness said that no for surety that that, uh, 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 uh. He said, the elder should serve the younger. That's what he said. I'm about to go back to the, to the uh, curse. The elder should serve the younger. Meaning that in the latter end, we're going to be over everything. But, in, in the process of time, they had to become in, uh, to be put in a position in order for us to get to where we need to be to come to never to never forget the things we just come out of we're coming out of right now to never forget what we're coming out of right now the hell we've been going through all over the world worldwide we'll never forget it for those who coming back according to whosoever uh, but. Right, I said, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom. See, all of us are going to remember all this stuff. We're going to remember the stuff that has happened to us. We're going to remember, and it'll never leave our mind because the Spirit is going to be upon us to make us understand. And we're the Spirit of the Father, this is the marriage of the Lamb. The Spirit is the Lamb upon Israel, which is the, the connection. The Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is the, is the connection of us and Yah. The Spirit is. That's our marriage. That's the marriage of the Lamb. Judah is the Lion. The Lamb is the Spirit. The Father is of the Spirit. The Spirit is connected to the Lion, which is Judah and Israel. And this is how we stay connected. And this is how the spirit is going to start to grow throughout the earth from us to others. 
If you get it, you got it. If you don't, keep studying. You'll get it. But now, let me have you understand, like I said, it's called structure of the family tonight. But before we go into the family, I'm giving you spiritual information first. And since we're here, I'm going to show you how the, how the spirit is the lamb. I got to give it to you. I got to give it to you. So I just broke it down for you. I'm going to give you the spirit first. I'm on. Uh, first, I'm going to give you the um, Ecclesiastes. See, there's so much that's in the scriptures that people fail to realize or put together because they're listening to what they're doing. They're listening to the, um, they're listening to the, the uh, what they call them, what they call them, the preachers that was taught from the seminaries. And think about this. The preachers was taught from the seminaries who don't even know the father. The creator said, Israel, only you have I known. So how these seminaries, which is of the Greek and Roman origin, going to teach you something they don't know? Matter of fact, the father said, of them that hate me. So if they hate you, they're teaching you against the father in the first place. Some people get it. Some people don't. We're right here. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, uh-uh-uh, chapter 12, verse 7. I'm going to hit you with that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7 states, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto Yah, who gave it. You see that? Now, if the father gave the spirit to the dust of the earth, you got to understand what's being said. In the long haul of everything, we're made of dust. We're actually made 90% water, and 90% uh, water, our blood cells and brains are made of 90% water, but we're made of 70 to 75% water. But the other half of that, or the other part of that, is dust. That's all this is. The flesh. That's dust. We are actually made of law. Land, which is us. Air, the, the breath that we breathe that keep, the, keep our body moving. And water. Land, air, and water is what? Law. A lot of people don't get that. I just gave you water with 70 75% water, blood cells and brain cells and 90% water. See what I'm saying? Uh, you see the bones and skin, all that's land. But then the breath is the air. That's the air. Land, air, and water, that's what we're made of. We are law. We put the whole law, hold to law, and keep law. Right? So, by us being the law, we are the children of Almighty. But some of us is outside the law because we don't choose to keep the law. All right? As I was saying, 12 and 7 states, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. So, if the dust to return to the earth, and the spirit shall return unto Yah who gave it. So, if the spirit return back to Yah, that means that the Father gave the Spirit in the first place in order for the Spirit to be a part of the dust. Some people don't get that. But it's there. But guess what's the whole duty of man? We'll go over here to verse 12 to 14. The reason I started at 12, because it's a brother, I couldn't think of his name yesterday, but just hit me right now. My boy Unk, which is Mitch's friend, which became a friend of mine in Atlanta. A lot of people probably know him because he's an atheist. And he looked for Israelites to challenge and other people to challenge because he's a book. He's a bookie. He go by books and read books. But fail to, and this is what gets me. The same, like I tell these people that's from that 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 learn all this other. I don't care if you're Billy Carson, and I'm not talking bad about him. I don't care if you are uh, um, Umar Johnson. I don't care who you are and what knowledge you think you know. I don't, I'm telling you what, I'm telling you straight from the mouth. I don't care who you are, who you think you know, or what you think you know. The same universal consciousness that gave anybody breath enough to put breath to write scrolls, to write on bricks or whatever, to chisel. The universal consciousness gave, did that. 
So I don't care how far in the history you find, you can't go no further than the beginning of life. And this is the sad part that people don't understand. I'm giving you family structure, but I guess I'm going spiritually first. But the point I'm getting at is the spiritual, the universal consciousness gave the people in, 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 in Egypt the knowledge to put down what they got. The universal consciousness gave the Sumerians, everybody, the knowledge to put down what they put down. So these people that run around telling ain't no God, this and that, and, and, and the people that got up in the sky, the universal consciousness that gives you life and breath gave you what you have to learn what you come to know. I don't care where you go off in the earth and what you want to believe. The universal consciousness gave you what you think you know. But it's up to you to keep searching and seeking the universal consciousness. A lot of people say God. A lot of people say Yah, according to what's scripted in the book. I'm saying universal consciousness to be uh, uh, universal. That's the reason why I'm saying universal consciousness, which is the creator, the almighty, who creates through us. He creates through us. Everything we come to know, to give, to know, to share, he, he do it, but he doesn't control you. Unless, unless, you are already anointed, or you have some, or you have a job you've come here to do. He actually probably puts you in a position, but all of you out there, you have your own choice, your free will. Everybody have free will. But as we said, my boy Unc, he's a bookie. He likes to read and study. But for you who like to read and study, verse 12 states, and further by these, my son. Be admonished of making many books. There is no end. We're going to make books till eternity. We're going to always, and whatever book is made is coming from somebody else's mind. And guess who put the knowledge there in their mind in order for that person to know to write the book? The universal consciousness. It's just that simple. People don't even go that far back to even think like that. Matter of fact, the words even coming through my mouth. It has to come from somewhere to put it here in order for me to say, even though I'm speaking on a subject, it's a lot of people whose brain, who's brain dead. It's a lot of people who came to walk. It's a lot of people who going through certain situations. It came to talk. But these things are going on for certain purposes. There's a purpose for everything and a reason for everything. But let's keep it moving. And further by these, verse 12, Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. And much study is to is a weariness of the flesh. And y'all know that, especially our people in college. Y'all know how much studying is. You're, you're worried and you're laid out and you're still trying to remember. But hey, you got to do to get that, that diploma, that piece of paper, as they say. Verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the conclusion. Fear Yah, fear the universal consciousness, and keep his commandments. For these is the for this is the whole duty of man. Whole duty of man. Whole duty of man. That's like a song. Whole duty of man. Well, I can put a beat to that. But um, verse 14. For Yah shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. It's going to come into judgment. So if it's not coming into judgment, how you... Tell me what the things you're doing is not being judged. You're being judged by the things you do in this earth. You're being judged by those things, right? Now, I was telling y'all, I'm, I'm going on spirit. I, I, I guess I'm going from top to bottom tonight. Revelation 5. Revelation 5, now I'm going to give you the lamb. See, I just gave you the father. I just gave you the connection with, with the Father, the one who gives the Spirit. See, I guess, family, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Family structure. 
And this is the structure. Starting with the almighty first. The head. Who is the head? Revelation 5, 5. We're going to start there. Because I don't know how long this is going to go. Because some things I, I could be reading a whole lot more. But I'm trying to be trying to. I'm already 40 something minutes in already. Revelations 5, 5. I only need to go 5 and 6 to show you the point of view. And then I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 49 when they got the blessings from their father, Yaakov. Genesis 49. I always have to put these together so you can see. Hold up. Okay, Genesis 50. That's the last one. The 49 right here. Here we go. Revelations 5, 5. And the heading here is, is the lion and the lamb. The lion and the lamb. See, a lot of people saying Jesus is the lamb don't even know the scriptures. See what I'm saying? I ain't going to go there. I'm almost about to go somewhere else. The lion and the lamb. Revelations 5. Now, if y'all want to know the reason why I'm going right here in Revelations 5, is because this is where the one they called John the Revelator cried because no one could read the book. But see, remember in Daniel chapter 12, the father told Daniel to close the book, close and seal the book, because this is not going to be until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. This is where we are today. The knowledge is being increased today. And then the knowledge being increased, the lion and the lamb, verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion is the tribe of Judah. Right? The root of David. See? And this is one thing I try to get people to understand. A tree don't have one root. A tree has many roots to hold it down. It's not one root sticking and then one stem sticking and one branch sticking like you got a light pole. No. And that's how people don't think. They just say stuff without thinking. Excuse me. The roots is like the bottom part of a, of a tree with branches. A root it spreads out under the ground. But then you do have a, a trunk which is um, some flowers you would call a stem. You have a trunk that rises. And out, of, and out of that trunk, you start getting branches. Many branches. You don't just get one branch off a tree. You get many branches from a tree. That's where the branches uh, 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 develop twigs and leaves and fruit. And a lot of people only looking at this as, oh, Jesus is the branch. Yahshua is the branch. When a man, let me say it. When a man ejaculates inside a woman, I'm gonna say it like that. I was trying to be, I'm trying not to be graphic. When a man ejaculates inside of a woman, there are many seeds, many cells, thousands of cells that goes into that woman. For whatever purpose, the scientists know. They, from what they looked up and what they say, it's many things, but it usually is one, two, maybe three. Mostly we have twins. Two make it to, one would definitely make it to the head. Sometimes we have two. Lately, we've been having people have four and five children. We have had, shall I say, not often, but it's, it has happened. Then that might be through sperm Who knows? I don't know. I'm not going to say that. But we do know thousands of sperm cells go in and one or two will come out. Right? So, out of those two or one that comes out, they're still spreading seed. You know why? Because the more women that, that that child have, the more seeds are being born. The more seeds are coming to this earth. See what I'm saying? By more seeds come to this earth, this is more branches to that tree. If you understand what I'm saying. So, David was a branch, a branch, because he's just like a seed. Remember? 
All of us are seeds. We all are seeds. And we plant, we're the root that's planting, and then we start to sprout from that point. And from there, we start to grow. Wherever how many children, or shall I say how many wives we have that have as many children that we have. And it grows from there. But let's keep it moving. That was just a little something for insight for you to probably understand. But back over here to the lion and the lamb. Revelations 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Hold, uh, uh, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, Yahuda, the root of David, has prevailed, which is the tribe of Judah has prevailed. prevailed. Not everyone in the tribe, but many from the tribe. The root of David has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Now, let's show you who the lion is. The lion of Judah. You go to 49. I'm not going to give you everything. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting things down now because I've been saying this for many a times. If a lot of y'all been following me and checking out some information, you know where I'm going. But I will tell you where to read for yourself and I don't have to read it all. But I'm giving you the main points. So you can read from verse 8 to 12. But I'm going to give you the keys, the key points, which is verse 10. Genesis 49 verse 10 states, The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter, meaning, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Let, me do, let, let me give y'all something right now. I have to share something with you. I mean, let me start at 8. I'm going to take it from 8 to 10 because there's something I have to share with you. Thank you, Father. Uh oh, mm. baby, baby. Nope. Let me do this. I see one of my uh, lights getting low. Real quick. Hold on, y'all. Real quick. One of my cameras getting low, so I'm gonna have to give him some energy. Hold on, YouTube. My Instagram is getting low. Hold on, real quick. Uh have to switch y'all up real quick. No good way this mode just full. Do it like this. Sorry about that. You was getting a little low. Your light went down. And here we are. All right, Instagram. Got you back. YouTube, you on point. Just make sure everything is straight and how they say copacetic. Now, okay. Okay, let's let's get it, y'all. Right. Seems like everything is off for a minute. We gotta make sure everything back straight. All right, good. I had to plug you back up because you start going dim on Instagram. But now, as I was just about to share with you, Genesis chapter 49, starting at verse 8. Something I want to share with y'all real quick, right? Now, verse 8, Judah, right here, key verse, what's going on right now today? I told you prophecy. You got to look at the prophecy. prophecy. Judah, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Y'all see that? Who's praising Judah today? Majority everybody. Everybody recognized Judah. Every time we turn around, people are talking about Judah. We're not talking, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not putting it down. I'm not saying anything bad, but I'm letting it be recognized for what it is. Right? Judah is the one everybody praising today. Everybody talks about Judah. You don't have to be bowed and praising them. It's just that when you acknowledge, it's the acknowledge, it's the things you do. You're acknowledging Judah. People don't even realize what they're doing. This right here, verse 8 says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is out here doing the work. That's mainly what it's saying. Judah's out here doing the work. The work is he's doing at the neck of his enemies, meaning that he got to touch you. He's doing it with his. Go right there. Judah is doing the work. Whether people want to accept it or reject it. Judah out here doing the work. I'm Judah. Brother, I know. See what I'm saying? 
Judah doing the work. So, Judah, thou art he whom thy brother shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. And there's a lot of people, and when we say bow down, we don't mean, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it means bow down as in praising like that, but they're recognizing Judah for the thing that Judah is doing. Excuse me. They recognize Judah for the things that Judah is doing. And that's like a praise because everybody's giving Judah the praise. Nine, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art going up. He stoopeth down, he crouches as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? That means he's smart, wise, intelligent. You ain't gonna be able to rouse him up too quick. But when he prounce, he coming at you with all force. It don't have to be, he don't, don't have to touch you. Tenth verse is my key verse I want to share with you. The scepter. If you don't know what a scepter is, a scepter with the king holds where he anoints his knights and his people. He gives them authority when he, with the scepter. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, which the father has anointed us. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. What I was telling you a few moments ago about those uh, cells. Maybe one or two will come out, but it's going to be thousands that go in. Until Shiloh come, which is the spirit. Shiloh is the spirit, which is here today. The spirit of the almighty is upon us as a people and as a nation and the world today. That's what was to come. Not no one man coming to save you from your sin. No, the spirit of Yah, which is the anointing spirit, is supposed to come upon the people. And you are Christ. You are the anointing spirit. Or the shot said the anointing spirit is upon you. You are the Messiah or you have been anointed. Which Messiah only means anoint, anointed, or anointing. Christ only means anoint, anointed, or anointing in English. Both of them mean those things in English, but in Greek is Christ, and in Hebrew is Messiah. Until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Unto us, which the Spirit is upon us, the gathering of the people is going to come from that point. A lot of people don't even get that. So, back to Ezra, uh, 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 Re Revelation 5. Revelation 5, 5. 5, 5, 5. Okay. Now, that was the lion. And that was, here comes the lamb. Verse 6. I'm going to hit 5 again. I'm reading on into 6. Verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the land, of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. Verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, verse 6, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts. Which four beasts? Babylon, Medes and the Persians, the Greek and the Roman Empire. In the midst of all these things happening, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. Stood a lamb as it had been slain. Remember in Revelation 11, it says that uh, the two witnesses was dead for three and a half days. That lamb was the children of Israel and Judah. And we was the witnesses from Babylon all the way to where we are today. And the half a day was the last 400 years. The last 400 years was the half. You got the beginning of a, uh, of a decade, we'll do it like that. You got the middle of a decade, and then you got the end of a decade. The beginning of the decade is from uh, uh, like, let's just say 50 to 60 or 49. You got 50, 51, 52, and maybe 53 would be the beginning. 
54, 55, 56, and maybe 57 will be mids, which is the half point. And then you got 57, 58, 59, or 58, 59, yeah, 57, 58, 59, or 59, 58, 59, 60, or however you want to put it. But you got a beginning, a middle, and the last. And it said uh, three days and a half. The half is the middle point, which is the 400 years. The three days, oh, there's so much here. I'm only giving this information to break into family structure, give you spirituality first. So as it says, and uh, verse six, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, which is Babylon, Medes and Persian, the Greek and Roman empire, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. Now, here you go. How do I prove this is the lamb or the lamb is the spirit that's upon us? As it had been slain, which is in the people who don't know who they are. We're dead as people. I just shared with you the Valley of Dry Bones last night. Ezekiel chapter 47, 1 through 14. We have been slain. We don't know who we are. We don't know our land, our language, our heritage, nor our culture. We've been slain in that sense. Having seven horns. These are the seven spirits. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits. See, which are the seven spirits of Yah. Sent forth into all the earth. How is it sent forth to all the earth? Through Israel, through his chosen. That's all the spiritual connection point upon man. When a woman, when a woman and a man come together, they come as one. They think as one, they build as one, but the man is the head. The woman is the help meet to the man. In the family structure. The family has been broken up by the satanic government which is really the satanic corporation who claims to be a government. Just giving it to you like it is. It's a corporation and everyone with a birth certificate and a social security card is an employee of that corporation until you come out of that corporation. Until you come out, you are an infant in that corporation. They look at you as a child. They look at you as a child, as a infant. This corporation that you call a government, they look at you as a child and as an infant. And by looking at you as a child and infant, they give you benefits. They give you allowances. They give you a little something here, a pinch of something there. But when you start standing on your own and knowing what's owed to you and knowing your rights, your liberties and all things, then you can stand. Once you start to stand, they know you're sovereign. And until you become into your sovereign state, your sovereign status, you're always a citizen, which is a slave, unto that corporation. And that's the back end. That's the back end. I'm coming straight down from spiritual, but I just gave you a tidbit of the, uh, 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 of the, uh, the bottom feeder. I gave you a tidbit of the bottom feeder that's actually your head right now. But let's keep it moving. Now, okay, I'm making sure we ain't too, too late up in here. Okay, now, so that was all the spiritual aspects and sharing on that point. There's a lot more I can go into that, but I better just get off that because, not better get off, I, I hope that was enlightening enough for you to understand the head, which is the father. The father is the head. The family structure is the law. The law the commandments. I just shared that with you in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Starting off where the spirit is and where it dwells. Spirit dwells within us. The spirit dwells within us, which is of the universal consciousness, which is the creator of all things. which is the creator of all things. So, now, for man. 
Now, we know that the Father has given man the dominion of the earth. Right here. He had already spoke and gave it, told Abram, or Abraham. Let me go ahead and take this out. Now, I'm, I'm done back here. Family structure. Let me give you a little bit of structure on the family. First, let me go ahead and give the information of what the Father said. Well, we all know when you go into the scriptures, you know, let's go to Genesis real quick. Excuse me. Good Genesis 15. But before 15, right here, 13. The promise to Abraham renewed. Right here, verse 14. Genesis 13, 14. Mm, let me go here. I'm just going to go with 13 and 14. Genesis 13 and 14 says, The promise to Abraham's renewed. To Abraham renewed. Verse 14. And Yah said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated, you see that? After Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look. Listen to this, y'all. Lift up thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward and southward and eastward and westward. That's all around. He said, get up and look, right? Lift up, lift, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. Right here. Verse four. For all the land which thou seest to, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. Now, wherever he was at and as far as he could see, he said he was giving it to him and his seed. He was going to give it to Abram and his seed. Now, don't forget, Abraham had many seeds now. He had Ishmael. He had Isaac. He had other sons too. Remember? With Keturah. But it all mainly boils down to this promise here. For all the land which thou seest, verse 15, to thee will I give it and to thy seed at, uh, for, to thy seed forever. Verse 16, and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. Y'all see that? I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. Okay, verse six, the other half of 16. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall they, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Who can number, who can number the dust of the earth? That's impossible. Verse 17. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. That's no matter where you go. See, a lot of people looking at just that land. No matter where our feet touch, the Father said he's going to give it to us. Genesis 13 started verse 14. 14 through 18. Arise, walk through the land, verse 17 again. Arise, walk through the land in the, uh, in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee, verse 18. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto Yah. See that? He chose to go there. But no matter where his foot touched, the father giving it to him. In the breath of the land, no matter. See, that's what people don't understand. People do not understand scripture. They only think of the land of Canaan, the land of Canaan, the land of land. The whole earth is the father's. And he just told them, no matter where you look and wherever you step to, the all of it is going to be yours. But the people don't know it and they don't get it because their study only is limited. Their studying 
is limited. Yeah, it's limited. When the spirit comes upon you to give you understanding, you can see massive and see a lot further than the little four walls that you see in Canaan. I'm not saying Canaan ain't important. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is the Father has given the earth to all of us, which is Israel first and to all the nations. But Israel is going to carry the law to all the nations. Okay, that was 13. So I just wanted to share that with you to show you that the Father has given, by him giving it to Abram first, now comes the blessing. Genesis chapter 25 first to give you understanding. I'm going by step by step to give you understanding step by step. Genesis 25. We up in the hour. We're about an hour and five minutes in. So I'm just giving you these points, these certain pointers. Genesis chapter 25. That's why I'm, I don't like going through the whole situation. Uh, chapter 25, the birth of Esau and Jacob. We only go so far here, but y'all can go in and start reading these scriptures for yourself and get an understanding. Don't read over it. Look at it and understand what the words are being said. Birth of Esau and Jacob, starting at verse 19. Genesis 25, 19. Excuse me. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac, verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. The daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of uh, Pan, Pan, Pan Aram, Pan, uh, uh, Padan, Padan Amram, Padan Amram, the sister of Laban, uh, the Syrian, verse 21. And Isaac entreated Yah for his wife because she was barren, meaning she couldn't have children. And Yah was entreated of him. See, this right here, when Isaac prayed, and Yah was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. She, now, she got pregnant because Isaac prayed for her, and he entreated, and she got pregnant. Verse 22. Excuse me. Verse 22. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? If this be of the father, why am I like this? And she went to inquire. See, a lot of people say, oh, they think I do. No, she went to inquire of Yah about the situation. And she went to inquire of Yah. Verse 23. And Yah said unto her. He ain't say unto them. He ain't say to Isaac. He didn't say unto Isaac and uh, Rebecca. He said, and Yah said unto her. That's what I mean by people be overreading stuff. They read it and they look past what's being said. And Yah said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two nations. And two manner of people. Two different type of people inside the womb. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. This is when Israel was called from the, from the bowels of my mother was I called. Every time y'all see that in, in Isaiah, it's talking about Israel. A lot of people don't get it. This is what it was talking about. My uh, that, uh, my name was called uh, uh, um, when, oh man, I'm not a quoter. Do you go to uh, Isaiah chapter forty nine, verse one through th one, two, and three. You can go to Isaiah chapter forty four, uh, I think forty three. There's many places in there it talks about it, but people don't get it. But hey, and the Lord said unto her, Two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels." And one people shall be stronger than the other people. Specifically, we can see Esau is stronger than us, but he, he got the he got the army, navy, air force, marines, um, and uh, 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 national guards, and all the stuff that they are they, they are stronger than us. That's why we're gonna beat them with our hands. We, we ain't gonna need no weapons. Anybody there that think they're gonna have to have a weapon, we are not gonna need weapons because you know what we're gonna need. The pen is mightier than the sword. This is the iron rod right here. This is the iron rod. Once you learn how to use it, 
You can move mountains. You got to know how to use it first. I, hey, I'm doing a good job with what I'm doing. I haven't gotten it totally perfected, but I'm doing a very good job from where I stand. And I'm just trying to share the same thing with you. That's why I'm here. So, from thy bowels and one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder, here we go, right here. This is the promise and prophecy. And the elder shall serve the younger. See that? We're coming into this point now. We're coming into this point. The 400 years was up in 2020. No, the 400 years was up the end of August of 2019. 2020 was the judgment. That's when really people started really dying off. So 2020 was the actual judgment. In 2020, by the plague in Ezekiel chapter 14. One, the, one is the plague, one is the plague, one is pestilence, one is uh by the sword, and the other one is by no by noisome beasts. All you gotta do is read uh Ezekiel chapter uh 14, verse 12 to 23. It gives you that, and all these things are gonna continue to happen until time that we need to be where we need to be. And we're growing there now for those who choose to be a part of Yah's kingdom. But as it said, and the elder shall serve the younger. And 24 says, and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Verse 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. Red all over mean the hair on him was red all over. He was hairy, came out hairy. But it wasn't only just hair, it was hair and he was he was red and hairy. So it was either him being real light skinny and, and he had a whole lot of hair on his body. You know what I'm saying? Or he just had a lot of red hair on him. See, if you look at what it's saying, and when her uh -uh, and when her day were to be delivered, were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, verse 25, and the first, 25, 25, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called him Esau. And after that came out, verse 26, and after that came out his brother, came his brother out, and his hand took Hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Yaakov, which is Jacob, and Isaac was three score when, years when he bear, when she buried him. He was sixty years old. Excuse, he was sixty years old when she buried both of them. Right. So as you can go down from twenty seven to thirty four, you see what happened with the birthright that was sold for a bowl of beans that. Esau didn't really didn't pay no attention and really didn't care for. And then comes chapter 27. This is the reason why Jacob never stole the blessing. It was already given to him before they came out the womb. And it's right here in uh, 27, Genesis 27, 28, and 29. 27, verse 28 and 29. Therefore, Yah give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. And plenty of corn and wine. We're going to be blessed with all these different things that we need to eat. And drink. Verse 29. Let people serve thee and nations, with an S, bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's son. See, he didn't say no name. He didn't mention no name. He just gave a prayer. He gave a blessing. He didn't mention a name. So a lot of people think these names are important. I'm not saying that they're not, but it's the action you do which is makes it the the relevant, which makes it relevant. The action. If you're doing the commandments, you're calling upon the, you're calling you're calling upon the name of Yah. Of the creator of the universal consciousness. It's about doing. It's not about, oh, how you, oh, how you, ya, ah, ya, ah, ha, ha, ya, how they be saying it. 
A lot of people worship to a deity named Yahshua and Jesus and Prophet Muhammad. And you know some even these people, and I've been saying it all the time, these people out here worshiping Farrakhan. Oh, we don't worship Farrakhan. Oh, that Honorable, Fire, Honorable Elijah Muhammad or the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said this. The, you don't hear nothing say the Father said it. You hear none of them saying the Creator said this. No, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said this, or the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said this. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan said that. Now I'm not talking bad about him because he's a person doing the, doing the Father's will, but they shouldn't be worshiping him like that. Now he's a teacher. He is a teacher. He's supposed to do what he's supposed to be doing, but the people are worshiping him not even realizing they put his name right there with the matter of fact they ain't even speaking on the father they're speaking on him so they're actually worshiping him and breaking the first commandment. The honorable Elijah Muhammad, you I mean I understand you give rec you want to recognize, but when you do it all the time like that you're worshiping, you're worshiping not even realizing. It. No different than I'm sharing with you about calling upon a name. He said, the elders should serve the younger. There was no name given. The action. And I'm saying that because I respect Farrakhan for what he stand, what they stand. I respect that, but I don't worship him. You know what I'm saying? I don't worship no man. When I call upon, I call upon the, the creator of the universe, the universal consciousness only. I will recognize people that's doing the work, though. Marcus Jarvey did the work. Farrakhan is doing the work. Prophet Muhammad did a work. If it was Prophet or not, I just say Mr. Muhammad did a work. Lou, uh, 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 I said Louis Farrakhan, but uh, look at Marcus Garvey. Look at Noble Drew Ali. Look at uh, 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 Nat Turner. Look at Malcolm X. Look at uh, Martin Luther King. All these was up Jacob's ladder. A lot of people don't even understand Jacob's ladder. Jacob's ladder, was, Jacob was standing at the bottom and he was looking at the father at the top and he said it was angels ascending and uh, uh, us, ascending and descending on and off the ladder. So by him seeing that, these are the things of the, that the people have, no different than um, Umar Johnson. Umar Johnson is another one. He's doing their work. No different than Kevin Samuels, who I still believe was murdered. I believe he was murdered because he was doing too much good, but the people couldn't see at the time. People couldn't see at the time, but as they listened to later on, they started understanding what he was saying. See, when you go into 2 Thessalonians 2nd chapter, 7, uh, 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 second chapter uh, 1 through 12, it talks about certain people doing a certain work and that wicked be revealed, but Kevin Samuel wasn't wicked according to telling the story. Now, I don't know if he was out here doing whatever that he was doing. No. It doesn't say we can't have more than one wife, but he was out here messing with these, quote unquote, you know, I just say whores. They had to be whores if they're giving themselves off and they're not being with them. And I don't know if he was making people whores neither. I can't speak for that. But the point I'm getting at is the fact that the work that he was doing, I always tell you, Men and people have a work to do. The father will use you for your work, but just because the father is using you for a work doesn't mean that your agenda is with his agenda. See, the father is using people. But this is where it comes to in that new in the New Testament. Father, Lord, 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 haven't we did wonderful works in your name? Haven't we cast out devils? Haven't we did this and haven't we did that? You know, say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. See, I didn't know you. I didn't know who you were because you wasn't part of me. The part of me is the work I had being done through you. You've done certain things that was of the Father's spirit, of the Father's power, because you are of the Father. But yet still, you has another part of you that you are. I come to find that out through my travels, dealing with people who is Conscious on one point, doing one thing, but had their own agenda over here as well. I understand that. Now, I just gave you a little bug right there, whether y'all understand that or not. That's why you got to watch people. I've been there, done that, been through it. I'm a witness. So I know about it. 
I know that certain people will do certain things and certain things that they're intentional on what they're doing, but they have their agenda as well. The agenda is them, but the work that they're doing is of the father, the way I see it. That's me talking on that. But the way I see it is the work of the father, but a person always had their own agenda on the side. No different than Ray. Remember Ray? When old boy was doing it, he would take the old boy that he fired. And he went out bad and, and, and shut and slammed the door because he was cut, making cuts on the side. That was him. But he was doing his work for Ray. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The movie Ray, Ray Robinson. Um, you know, I can't even get his whole name out, but y'all know uh, uh, who played the movie. Um, Jamie Foxx played the movie of Ray. You know, I can't even think of the singer's name. Ray. I can think it's Ray right now, but let me keep it moving. But the point is, the, the man had his own agenda on the side by still doing his work. This is how you make sense. This is what I'm saying about separation, y'all. Separation is happening today. So, back to where we were. Genesis 27. This is where uh, uh, verse 28 and 29 say, Therefore, Yah give thee of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Verse 29. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brother in and let thy mother's son bow down to thee. See that? That's why I stopped that. But curse be everyone that curseth thee and bliss be he that blisseth thee. Listen to how that said now. I told y'all y'all got to listen to that word. Curse be every, every individual that cursed thee. All y'all people out there that's talking bad and talking whatever, all y'all that's cursing and, and doing this and that and trying to do bad to a person, to an individual, shall I say, curse everyone that cursed thee and bliss he. See how smart that is? And bliss that individual. Bliss he. Bliss. I don't like saying be less. Bliss me heavenly. Bliss he that blisseth thee. The person that bliss you will be blessed. If you don't know what bliss means, look it up. I know what it means. It means heavenly. But now let's go over to where we're coming out of today. This is what we're coming out of because this is what broken our family structure. Genesis 27, verse 39 and 40. I'm going to give you the cut. Sugar. Like I said, we, I'm about ready to go into part two in a few moments. 39 to 40. Now he go to blessing of Esau. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Said same thing over here. What's it called? Behold, God give thee of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Now over here at uh, 39, and Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. It's what they have. Did not, listen, listen. Ooh, thank you, Father. Did not the Father tell Abraham, this goes to show the Father don't lie. He said, thy seed said, look to the north, the west, the east, and the south. And no matter where your feet, your feet be, it's all yours. Don't forget, Esau, his child too. Don't forget that. Esau is his child. So Esau is the one that went around pillaging throughout the earth that you will find in Jeremiah 25, verse 15 through 38. That's Esau. That's his child too. So everybody that's Israel, 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 they take the focus off everything around them. It's good to know who we are, but you got to know all history. You got to know the full facts, which people care not to really check out. But that's up to you when it happens. Let me see something real quick, y'all. Nobody gets to the father without going through the son. That's right. I agree with you. We're the son. I'm telling you who the son is now. Nobody gets to the father unless they go through the son. The son is us giving the word to the world. Yes, the son is Israel. I agree with you, my brother. Let me see who that is. Carlos Cross. Carlos Cross. Yes, Carlo, I agree with you 100%. The son is Israel. Exodus 
chapter 4, verse 22. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Yep, I agree with you 100%. So as he said, and Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. This is his blessing besides that. Verse 40, and by thy sword shall thou live. See that? By thy sword, he's the one that is the sword that's going to go throughout the earth. And by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother. You're going to serve us with the sword too. And shall serve thy brother. Uh-huh. He's going to live by the sword and he's going to serve us with the sword. And he's going to end up serving us without the sword as well. He's going to serve us because he knows that it's our time. And shall serve thy brother. But down here, over here, it says, uh, verse 29 says, let people serve thee. You see that? You see that? You got to go back and forth and understand what's being said. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Now let's go back up here, it says, and shall serve thy brother. He's going to serve us in both ways. While he's in charge, he's serving us on the evil point. But when we get in charge, he's going to be taking care of us. If you can see. You got to have eyes to see. And by thy sword shall thou live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall, here we go, and it shall come to pass when, uh, hmm, when thou shall have the dominion. The dominion of what? the dominion of the earth. They have the dominion of the earth now by the corporations. This is them being in charge by the corporations. The corporations is commercial. And by being under the corporation, you are an employee with a birth certificate and social security card. You are everyone in the world is an employee to the Pope and to the Universal Complex of England, which was the, the Queen at one time, but the ones behind them, everyone with a birth certificate and social security card is an employee unto them, and they are servants. Servants unto them because they are citizens. Structure of the family, y'all. I'm giving y'all structure. I guess I'm giving you the world family, not just the individual family. But I'm giving you the world family on the ways from spiritual all the way down. And the father bringing out the ways God. My mindset was bringing on the families, but it's coming the way it's coming. So I have to give it the way it's coming. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Almighty. So, and it says, and by thy sword shall thou live and shall serve thy brother and it shall come. Can, when you say that, that's the father speaking. I don't care if said it to Isaac. That was the spirit speaking through Isaac to, to Esau. And Esau is this satanic government that is a corporation that we call a government. Until you come out of her, my people, by becoming sovereign. I was saying nationalized, but I don't know if nationalized is making you sovereign, but my main word is sovereign, meaning free. Until you become free, you are a slave. You are an indentured slave, meaning you're working for your wages, even though the wages you're working for is already coming out of your trust. It's already coming out of your trust. You're getting paid for something that's already yours. Put it like this. Tell like a child when they get allowance at the end of the week. When they get an allowance at the end of the week for doing it, taking out the trash, doing it, they're, they're working to get something. I ain't going to say that it's owed to them no way because it's up to the parents to give it to them. Look at that same with the system. The system is your parents. And as you go out here and work, you're working for whatever you're getting from your parents, which is the system. A lot of people don't see it like that, but that's the way it is. When you go and apply for a job, let's just say, when you sign your signature on anything, it's already paid for. But when you give your social security number and then you agree to what you want, you just made a contract. 
Your contract, you agree to whatever it is that they have offered, keyword, offered you. They use that word offer a lot, especially in court. They're offering, and it's up to you to accept it or reject it. But let's keep it moving. Verse 40, one more time on Genesis. And by thy sword shall thou live, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion of the earth. I added that part. When thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off your neck. Break his yoke from off your neck. Meaning that when we were in charge at one time, before Esau grew into power, we were in charge and we were handling business. But we fell out because the father said that we're supposed to keep the law. We didn't keep the law. And he said that if you don't keep my law, I'm a senior land and ye know not. There you're going to serve other gods. Wooden stone, gods your fathers have to know. Now, let me show you where the fall off came at. Right there was the blessing. Now, this is the, all the stuff spiritually, all the way to where we're at right now. Not right now, but to the point where we just got, got off at, right? Now, we were supposed to teach these commandments, laws, statutes, all these, all this stuff. Okay, okay. Something just hit me over here. Ooh, man. Verse. Okay. Deuteronomy 7, uh oh, well, I know Deuteronomy 7, but mm, something just hit me right there. But what I'm trying to get to Deuteronomy chapter 6 is exactly where I was just at. Yeah, I sit right there in my face. Oh, I had two, there we go, I had two, two pay. Yep, that's what it was. So, now before I go, mm -hmm. Yep. Before we go into part two, I'm going to end with this and I'm going to start with this. Right? Deuteronomy chapter six, starting at verse four. I'm going to go with one to nine. But I would like to start at four, but I'm going to go ahead and start at one because I'm here. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse one says, the great commandment, the great commandment the great commandment. Here we go. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which Yah your father commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land where ye go to possess it. In the land, whether, no matter where ye go to possess it, that thou might, and y'all don't really see, you know what? The more I'm reading this, the more I see that it means no matter where you are, in whatever land you go to. Because it's not saying any Pacific land. It said in the land. Whatever land you go to, you're supposed to be doing these commandments. No matter where you go in the earth. Because the Father said, all the earth is mine. The whole earth is mine. So if he said the whole earth is his, but he's giving it to us, for no matter what we see, people don't even get it. The more you read, the more, it, the more you read it, it reads into you. By the spirit that's in the words of this book. But let's keep it moving. Now, I'm glad I started right here at one. Deuteronomy 6 and 1 again. The great commandment. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which Yah, your father, com commanded to teach you. That, ye, that he commanded to teach you. That ye, you, might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it. Whatever land it is you at, from what I'm seeing, we understand that it was talking about Canaan, but wherever you go to possess it. You got to go back here and stay. That's why you got to stay in the law. Because wherever you go, you start to see, no matter where you are, you're supposed to keep this law. Verse 2, that thou mightest fear Yah thy father to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you well, uh, what shall I say? Which I command thee, thou and thy son. Okay, here we go. Thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. 
That's no matter where you at. That's no matter where you at in the earth that your days may be prolonged. Remember when Joseph got sold into Egypt? He kept the laws and the commandments as much as he knew. And his days was prolonged. Study the book, you can see. You can see the, the evil for those who didn't keep the, man, the commandments. All you have to do is read Jeremiah chapter 44. And I just shared one with you with Joseph, who was in Egypt, who became great in that land. Verse 3, hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, which is you, and that ye, you, may increase mightily as the as Yah thy fathers, as Yah of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Now I'm talking about a certain land that flow with milk and honey. Verse 4. Hear, O Israel, Yah our Father is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our Yah is one Father. But I say, Yah, Father is one. Verse five. And thou shalt love Yah thy father with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Verse six. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Verse seven. And thou shalt teach them diligently. Definitely. You must teach this Commandments to your children. Right? And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them. See, this is an everyday thing. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou rises up, that means this is supposed to be an everyday conversation. We're supposed to be talking about the Father, talking about the Word, talking about certain things, and just conversate like me and my wife. The reason I'm on this conversation right now is because of the conversation that me and my wife had at dinner. We're just sitting up having a conversation. She's telling me about something that's going on in one of our daughter's lives. Yep. Something going on good. And we were just talking about certain things, right? So family structures what I, I, I kind of came up with tonight and this is where we at the family structure walk is by the way and when thou liest down and when thou rises up verse 8 and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as front lids between thy eyes that means that anything you see that is wrong, you already know. Nope, they ain't supposed to be doing that. We ain't supposed, I ain't supposed to be doing that. Whatever you see, front lens in front of your eyes, you see that's wrong, you either share something with somebody and let them know if they want to hear. If they don't, okay, I'm done. I'm just not doing that. That's how your app, Joe, issue of evil by knowing the law. He issue of evil, meaning that, well, I ain't doing that. You know, like some people be, Running with football, dodging. I was pretty good. I was pretty good at tag, too. They couldn't catch me. But the whole point I'm getting at is you got to understand the front lid between your eyes is keeping the word. So a lot of people look at things physically and they don't understand spiritual information when it's being said. Verse 9. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and on thy gates. Do you know how people have like little sayings around the house and stuff like that? If you got spiritual sayings, that would just keep uh, that stuff be like, okay, and then who knows who come to your house? You know how some people have little things in the bathroom and they have like little sayings and whatever? People look at that, oh man, I like that. Or, you know, because something it, it triggers sometimes. So if you got spiritual words around the house, you got the Ten Commandments up, you got different things up around the house, speaking on the word, telling the word, and baby, whether y'all know it or not, it's energy. It's energy in words. Excuse me. Let me see. I don't got damn one of my bottles around me. 
No different than this copper bottle carries energy when I put water in. This copper bottle, if y'all know about copper toner, y'all know about copper toner, right? Y'all know when people have uh, 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 them aches and pains, you know what I'm saying? When you get copper and you put it on and you wear copper, it does something to those, your bones to actually stop you from pain. It actually draws out the pain. I, I'm saying the pain, but it draws out certain things. And when you drink copper water, it helps, it helps the body as well. It's so much knowledge out here that people don't know. And my baby got this for me for my Earth Day. I love my baby. The father has blessed me well. A lot of people don't even know they got wealth around them. They looking for money. Wealth is all around you. Your friends, the company you keep, the things you do and say. It all depends on how you do it. These things are wealthy. A lot of people are always looking for the, the material thing, but y'all got to understand what, what real wealth is. Now, let me get back over here. And as we said, we're only going down to, uh, say, and thou shalt bind them for, verse 8, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. Not an actual sign, but you know, it's just like the word is being like your right hand. The word is like a part of you. This, and you know what? When it says the word was made flesh, this is how the word is made flesh. A lot of people don't understand. Y'all looking at the Romans way of them giving you a story and giving you a man that they said made, when you study the word, it becomes flesh within you. You are the walking and living word when you do this with you and your children. This right here is the word walking in flesh within you. Verse 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, Yah our Father is one Father, and Yah shall love, and thou shalt love Yah thy Father with all thine heart and with all thine soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart within you. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlids between thine eyes. That's because you're always going to have the law right there. Matter of fact, that's the pineal gland. Don't they talk about that? The first eye. I like to call it, some people say third eye. That's the first eye. That's the first eye that's talking about right there. And thou shalt write them upon her arm. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontly as between thy and I, because they're going to be in your mind. The law going to be in your mind. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and upon thy gates. I just told you about putting them around. And the word is energy within your home. A lot of people don't know this information, and they don't understand it. But one thing on the contrary of that, let's go over here to Deuteronomy 7 at a certain point. This is why the father said we're not supposed to marry other nations. Just as we said we're supposed to teach them diligently unto our children, this verse 3 and 4, Deuteronomy 7, 3 and 4, I'm just going to hit that. I ain't going through all the other stuff. I'm just going to show you what this is right here. Neither shall thou make marriages with them, meaning other nations. I'm just going to say other nations. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his son shall thou give unto, they take unto thy son. Don't give your daughters to them, they, they, your children. Don't give your daughters to his sons. And don't give his daughters, don't take his daughters unto your son. Your son is the house, the head of the house. Your daughter is supposed to be married to a Hebrew Israelite man. Because that's who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to y'all heathens out there that want to do what you want to do. You want to do what you want to do? Keep it moving. I'm talking to the ones who want to do the creator's word. That's who I'm talking to. All right? Y'all can do whatever you want to do in the earth. That's on you. But I'm talking to the ones who wants to do the Father's will, who wants to do the creator's will. Those are the ones who I'm talking to. So if you want to understand who I'm talking to, please like, share, 
and subscribe. I don't say that often, but I need to be saying it more often. Please like, share, subscribe, and share with people. Let people hear and see what's going on. If you want the greatest word, this ain't my word. I'm speaking. I'm speaking in place of for Almighty Yah, through the Spirit of Yah, through His Word. If you want to be a part of that army of Mikael and Daniel and uh, Daniel and Revelation 12, that's all you got to do. Learn, build, and give. Again, verse 3. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Why? The father's going to give you a why. For they will turn away thy son from following me. They're going to turn your son. See, if the father's already teaching your son, the father, not, it is the father, but if the father, if the creator told the father to teach your son and your son's son, they're already being embedded what's supposed to come on or what they're supposed to do in life. But what happens when a woman comes in your life? Y'all men know. Y'all call, y'all just melt for these women. When the women ask you to do something, you're going to do what they want you to do. That's why he say don't give your son into their daughter and don't take their daughter of you because they're going to change as I shared last night. Look at all our, uh, our athletes, stars and comedians and everybody. Some of them have broken homes because they have gotten with who the industry gave them. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I gave names last night. Look at Steve Harvey. What didn't happen with him and his ex-wives? I gave other names last night, but I'm going to give some more tonight. Steve Harvey, what happened to him in his past? Look at the fact that, look at this. Look at this. Since I said Steve Harvey. Look at the one Michael B. Jordan was, was, was with, was, was, was dating. Then he wanted to marry her. Steve, if Steve was a man... If Steve was, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say it flat. I'm going to straight flat. And I should have been winning on the part two. But I'm going to say this real quick. If Steve was a real man, knowing Michael B. Jordan was a man, he should have coached that girl, you need to marry this man. You need to marry this man. He man's love, this man loves you. Y'all make a great couple. And man, you know, man, he, man, you know something? You can look at Steve Harvey in two different ways. He gives good advice, but his ethics is messed up. He can talk good, give good advice, but his whole mindset of ethics is messed up by his actions. You can go back and do your own research. I don't have to say no more than that. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. His actions. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. That's it. So we can read call this the end of part one. And um, oh man, his holy people of the Lord. I, well, I like the way that comes in. But I'm going to start back off with where we at right there at, at Deuteronomy 6. I'm going to start back off there to go back with the family structure and give you more information according to the family. And I wish my wife was in here because we had a nice conversation, but she didn't went back there. Baby, you in bed? She might be back there waiting on me. Family matters, that is. But other than that, <laughs> we get ready to call it the end of part one. And by calling this the end of part one, nope, let me do this first. We're going to pause you over here first, um, Zoom, and uh, we're going to come back with part two. But you'll still be ho holding on to the whole thing. So we're going to have you hold on for a minute. We'll be right back. And see you at part two in a few moments. All right, everybody. All right, all right. Part one is done. I had to switch phones up because it, it um it was getting low there. So we're ahead and switch phones up over here on Instagram. Still on YouTube, uh, uh, YouTube, Instagram, and we are back live over here on Zoom, which has four recordings. And don't forget, this is part two of the family structure. This is part two of the family structure. And we're going by the, where the spirit took me tonight. We're going spiritually from the family structure, starting from the spirit 
on down into understanding the, the way that things was being made and the family structure of the earth. You might as well say it. I should put that on there. The family structure of the earth on how things are going to be when time comes. I went through the commandments. I went through the spirit. I went through how everything was set up in time past in order where it needs to be today. And by showing that then, showing where we're coming to and what we're growing into is the family structure of the earth. Or the spiritual I don't know. Right now I got the family structure. But I know it, it wasn't, this part might go more into it. Part two may go more into it on the, the physical realm. But the spiritual realm, I started off in part one. So the family structure is what this is called. And over here, I made a mistake. I got part one when it's really part two uh, over there. So I didn't change that uh, part one. But we're where we are. So got a little music going on. We'll pause that real quick. Even though I like for it to keep going. But Zoom don't get it, so... That's one of my jams. That's one of my jams right there. Uh oh, I don't want to go anywhere. There we go. All right. As I was saying, uh, that that uh, that is a deep house music mix. Uh, South uh, South Africa. That's a deep house music mix. That's my um, supporting theme song for the night. Which is my theme song for the night is "Keep It to Yourself," which you heard in part one. But back to the story. And as, as I said, I ended with the structure of the family according to the law being taught in Deuteronomy chapter 6. In the law being taught in, two, in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Then I gave you a reason why the father said don't marry these other nations because they're going to teach your children away from the law. What happened to Solomon? Right? What happened to Solomon? What, what happened in that in that time, Solomon went away because these other wives started having him doing things he wasn't supposed to do. Let's get back started. All right. We start back again. Deuteronomy chapter six, starting at verse one. Deuteronomy chapter six, starting at verse one. And here we go. It says, The great commandment. This is the great commandment. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which Yah your father commanded you, teach you, that you, ye, might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it. To me, I see this as no matter what land, whether you go to possess it. Because it said whether you go to possess it in the land, where, whether you go to, whether, not where you go to possess it, whether you go to possess it, verse two, that thou mightest fear Yah thy father to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son. Now check this out. You don't see it say judgment there. See a lot of people say, "Oh, you got to kill this." A lot of it, the judgment wasn't always about killing. That's the first thing that comes to people's mind who is not totally learned, who doesn't actually know the law. See what I'm saying? That comes to people's mind who don't really know the law. Certain things you're supposed to get whipped for, certain things you're supposed to be ex exiled for, certain things you're supposed to die for because of not keeping the law. See what I'm saying? Again, that thou mayest fear Yah thy father to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. What did it say in the fifth commandment? Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land whether Yah has driven thee or have given thee. Verse 3. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it. Listen. Hear. See, say, don't say listen. Hear means to do. 
Hear therefore, O ye Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, which is with you, and that ye may increase mighty, mightily, as Yah, thy father, uh, Yah of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Whatever land that may be to me. But here, O Israel, Yah our Father is one Yah. Is one. Verse 5. And thou shalt love Yah thy Father with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. This is how these commandments become flesh. This is how the word becomes flesh. This is how the law becomes flesh. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. This is law. This is the creator telling you what he wants you to be doing. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. I used to love doing that when I got back home. From, when I got to Mississippi, and we sit down, we had conversation all the time about the law, about the word. And when you get into it, you know it almost like the back of your hand, the front lid between your eyes. When you get into it, you know that word. Not just quoting it, you know it. That's when you're doing it. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. You're going to sleep with it on your mind. You're rising up with it on your mind. So you ain't got no time for foolishness. See what I'm saying? You're going to do everything correct in the way according to the law. You're going to teach, your children is going to learn the ways of the word and the ways of the law, and then they're going to do it as they get older. And they're going to teach their children. And they're going to teach their children. And their wife is supposed to submit to them according to the law. A lot of women don't know how to be wives today. Why? It's because the system has taught them to be women. Or females, should I say. The system has taught these ladies, these women, how to be females. All they want is the bag. They just want feet. They want, they want the bag. Majority of them. I'm not talking about all. I'm talking about majority of the women today. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign. Excuse me. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. That's when you know the word. And they shall be as front lids between thine eyes. The penile gland. They should be in that brain. That first eye. Spirit. That's your spiritual eye. Verse 9 and last verse for the moment. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and upon thy gates. That's when you're putting stuff around the house. You know, when you walk around, you're going to see it. You're going to, oh, okay, yeah. So it's going to stick with you. Like I said, words are energy. Words are energy because if you ever get time, look at messages in water. That's why I make my water the way I make my water. When I make my, when I'm doing my alkaline water, I use, I never touch the water, but I use stones, crystals, or organized energy conductor that line up chocolate all around the body. I play soothing music. I put my passion, my love into it, which enhances the energy in the water. And people can tell. People can tell. Leave it at that. Excuse me. Now, this is the key to that as well. Now, warning against, warning against disobedience to the law. See, the first, we just read down the great commandment, one through nine. Chapter six, Deuteronomy six, verse 10. Warning against disobedience, right? And it shall be when Yah thy father 
shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy father. See, right here, he's letting you know at this point what land that he bringing you to at this point. Other than that, he said, no matter where you go. And to the point that he said, the land with milk and honey. But other than that, it was no matter where, it was like, wherever you go, no matter where you go, possess it. But now is, and it shall be when Yah thy father have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. Verse 11. And houses full of all good things which thou fillest, fillest not, and wells dig with which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Now, that verse 11 right there is a key verse. A lot of us is going to be coming into the same thing. Stuff that we ain't build, we ain't plant, everything is going to be given to us. The great abundance, the great, the great abundance is coming. Afterwards, I would judge that nation. No, then I would judge that nation. Then afterwards, they're gonna come out with great substance. They're gonna give us that like they did in the time of Egypt. They gave us stuff that they said to happen anyway. This is what it's talking about. Verse 12. Then beware. Now, this right here is the creator. Warning comes before destruction. Then beware lest thou forgetteth Yah, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Verse 13, that thou shalt fear Yah, thy father, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Whatever it is, you're going to, when he say swear, I don't think he mean physically swear. I mean the fact that everything you do, his name is attached to it. And if you do anything according to the law, against the law, pain is coming. Because as long as you're keeping the law, you're going by his name. Not by swear, oh, I swear the name of no. I don't believe it. I do not believe. That's my point of view. You swear by his name by doing it, and you hold and you hold in heart like me. I'm going according to everything I'm doing. I'm doing according to the law. I ain't doing it to the creator's law. And find out, I ain't give you, I'm gonna leave that alone for a minute. I'm about to give you too much because I got one more to go. I'm leave that alone for a quick minute. You don't want to give the enemy ammunition. So, thou shalt fear Yah thy father and serve him and shalt swear by his name. Verse 14, ye shall not go after other deities of the deities of the people which are round about you. Jesus, Yahshua, that they changed from a man and mortified him or made him immortal. Prophet Muhammad and all these other people. For Yah thy father is a jealous father among you, lest the anger of Yah thy father be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. That's what happened in judgment. 2020 time, a lot of people were destroyed. By the plague. Verse 16. Ye should not tempt Yah thy father. Isn't that what your Jesus said in, in uh, uh, Isaiah 4 and 4? No. In 4 and 6 or 8. 4 and 4 says, Ye should not live by bread alone, but by every word of Yah. I got to make sure I want to keep this case. I need to come to Ye shall not tempt Yah your father as ye tempt him in Massa. Make sure I keep this. This is 6 and 16. I knew this was in this area. But now I came up on it to know exactly when I need it and where to find it when I'm going through Matthew 4 and this point. Because he always spoke when it was written. It is written. Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word 
that cometh from the mouth of Yah. The second one is, ye should not, uh, 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 ye should not tempt the Lord, right? You should not tempt Yah thy father, as ye tempted him in Massa. Verse 17, ye shall diligently keep the commandments of Yah thy father and his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded thee. You don't see judgments there, but this is talking to the people. See what I'm saying? This talking to this ain't talking to the priests. I mean, it's talking to the priests, but this isn't pertaining to the priests. This is talking to the people in general. See, that's the whole thing. There's order to everything. Everybody's not supposed to do everything. And that's the problem. There's order. And the judgment comes from the judges. The judges give the judgment. Because the Father tells them what the judgment is. According to the statutes, and this testimonies, which is the commandments. Again, uh, 17. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of Yah, Yah fa thy father, and his testimonies, and his statutes. Judgment wasn't in there. Which he has commanded thee. Verse 18. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of Yah, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the, the good land which Yah thy father swear unto thy fathers. Then it talks about to cast out the, uh, the enemies and things like that, but um, here we go. 19. I'm going to read 19 real quick. It says, the good land which Lord swear unto thy father, verse 19, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee as Yah has spoken. Now, check this out. Verse 20. Check this out, y'all. I actually got this marked. Ah, oh, ball, there we go. Verse 20. This is the key to the family. Structure, remember? Verse 20, Deuteronomy 6 and 20. And when thy son asked thee in the time to come, saying, What meaneth the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Yah thy father has commanded you? What meaneth these things, Father? Why should we do these things? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, Cause and effect. The, the, the child asks you a question, give him the answer. Then shalt thou say unto thy son, we were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and Yah brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Verse 22. And Yah showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. Now, this happening before our eyes in time past. We don't see it today, but we probably can see him in dreams. We can probably see him in visions. Certain things has happened in our time past. Verse 23. And he brought us out from this that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. Verse 24. And Yah commanded us to do all these statutes to fear Yah our father for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. Excuse me. At this day. Verse 25, last verse for uh, Deuteronomy 6. And it shall be out, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yah our Father, as he has commanded. Now, now, now let me show you something. What did this just say? It's a key here. That the father said to whoever said, because the father is speaking. And he's telling us what to say. And it shall be. See what I'm saying? Our righteousness. The commandments is your righteousness. You see how people, you know, you know how many people might have skipped that? The commandments is your right here, 20 again, 25. Deuteronomy 6, 25. 
and it shall be our righteousness. So when you go into Ezekiel chapter 20, uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 14, starting at verse 12. And it says, I'm going to get that for you in a few moments. I've got to get that for you so you can understand the difference between righteousness and the difference between wickedness. Let me get it real quick, mama. Thank you, Father, for letting me read that on down. Ezekiel chapter 14. That's one of my favorites right there. Because it tells you about going to a prophet. That's, three, that's written up in three parts. It's right. Thank you, Father. Ezekiel 14. The word of Yah, okay, the famine, the noisome beast. Here we go. I'm just going to start to it. The judgment on Jerusalem, which is Israel. Just going to start that real quick and just read this for a quick moment. The word of Yah came again to me saying, son of man, when the land sinned up against me by trespassing. Listen what it's saying. Son of man, when the land sinned up against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof with the will uh, thereof and will send famine upon it. Famine is when you don't have, you're going to break the staff. I mean, you ain't going to have no food. You ain't going to be able to eat. Starvation. Starvation. Upon it. And will cut off man and beast from it. Verse 14. Key verse. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Joab, Job, were in it, should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness. By their righteousness. You see that? See, a lot of people don't even know what righteousness is. Just told you right over here at the end in Deuteronomy chapter 6, 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yah our Father as he commanded us. The Father don't lie. The Almighty don't lie. And for whoever thinks this book ain't true, the universal consciousness put it in their mind to have this written. And by it being written, the curses and the blessings the blessings is true, so is the curses. Again, now it says the noise and beast, and then it goes into, um, let me go ahead and hit the noise and beast real quick. By their righteousness, save your, uh, save your father. Verse 15, if I, now I want y'all to see some here, since we're doing uh, 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 family, um, uh, the family structure. The fam I got to give you evil and good. I'm giving you the evil and the good, but the structure is according to the law. 15. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate that no man may pass through because of the beast, verse 16. Ezekiel 14 16. Though these three men were in it, as I live, said Yah. Yah of the living and not the dead. As I live, said Yah, they shall deliver neither sons, this is the key, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. That means that use your job to teach them children, but it's up to them children to do what's right. It's up to them to do what's right. Nobody fault but their own shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. See what I'm saying? You, you can't save your children. Verse 17. Or if I bring a sword, which is Esau, we just read in part one. By thy sword shall thou live. Genesis chapter 27 and 40. By thy sword shall I live. If I bring a sword upon the, that land and die and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Man and beast. This goes to show how you are preserved. Israel, who's keeping the law. 
Though these three men were in it, as I live, said Yah, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Verse 19. Or if I send a pestilence, see all this still is of, you notice the word righteousness was after uh, in verse 14, right after the famine. So it's still saying why they're going to be saved. We're in it as I live, say, oh, 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 I'm sorry, verse 19. Or if I send a pestilence into the land and pour out in my fury upon it the blood to cut it, cut off it, man and beast. That was your corona. That was the virus. The pestilence. And the people don't get it. The father sent it, no matter if it was man's doing or the creator's doing of the, of, of the weather, whatever, it's still of the father. Just like no different when Satan couldn't do no more to Job than Almighty let him. Excuse me. Y'all might allow certain things for certain purposes and for certain reasons. The pestilence into the land and pour out in my fury upon it blood to cut off from it man and beast. Verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Joab, Joab were in it as I live, said Yah, they, need, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. By their righteousness. Verse 21. For thus saith Yah, thus saith Yah. For thus saith Yah, how much more will I send my four sore judgments? These are judgments. The father puts out in the earth in, in due time. My four sword judgments upon Jerusalem, upon Israel, the sword, the famine, the noisome beast, and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. Verse 22. Yet, behold, therein shall be left a remnant. He's not going to get rid of everybody. A remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters, behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings. So the one that's going to be left off is going to be the ones who get saved because they're keeping the law. Look at it. The remnant. Yet, behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be left, uh, uh there shall be brought forth both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and ye shall see their way and their doings, and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem. Excuse me. Even concerning all that I have brought upon it. 23 and last verse. And they shall comfort you when ye see their ways and with and their doings. And ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith Yah. The reason why you're going to know he has done with cause? Because he got people like me and he got people like me sharing the information to show you the reason why it was a cause for him to do it. That has awoken to know according to his word. And over here again. And it shall be our righteousness, verse uh, Deuteronomy 6, 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yah, our Father, as he had commanded us. Now, another point to this is disobedience. I'm going to go over here again to verse 3, Deuteronomy 73 and 4. Neither shall thou make marriages with them, Thy daughters thou shalt not give unto thy son. Remember, your son is the one who you teach. You teach your daughters as well, but you probably teaching your son because your son is going to be head of a household. But the daughters should know this information as well. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. By uh, thy daughters shalt thou give, shalt thou not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Verse four: For they will turn away thy son from following me. 
and that happens. That has happened. With people who have married another nation, I used Solomon as an example before, but we know what happens. That they may serve other gods, so, we, so will the anger of Yah be kindled against you and destroy these suddenly. Now let's go down here to a holy people, to Yah. We put be a holy people to him. A holy people to Yah. For thou art a holy people unto Yah, like five, verse 6. A holy people unto Yah, verse 6. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art a holy people unto Yah, thy father. Yah, thy father, has chosen thee to be a special people. A special people. We're special, y'all. To be a special people unto himself above all that are upon the face of the earth. See that? Told you we're special. We're the one that went through the hell. Verse 7. Yeah, Verse 7. Yah did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any of any uh, more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. We were the least in the earth. Verse 8. But because Yah loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers. Have Yah brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of the of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt? Know therefore that the, that Yah, thy father, he is Yah, the faithful Yah, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. That should tell you right there. That should tell you right there. To a thousand generations. And repay of them that hate him to their face. He repay them that hate him to their face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Then it goes to the blessing of obedience. So, y'all need to read and study this information. Verse 7, 6, 7, and 8 is to be read. And I would say also to say 9, too. <gasps> Excuse me, when? Stuff coming down on me. So we see, and this is the structure of the family. Spiritually, according to the law, as a, Numbers chapter 30, real quick. Numbers. Well, I was going the wrong way. Here we go, right here. Thank you, Father. Numbers chapter 30. Uh-uh. At 29 or 30. Here we go, right here. Numbers chapter 30. Understand this. This is according to the household, as I shared. A woman should be in her father's house until a man come and takes her to his home. Until a man come and take her from her father. To his home. And that man has to be observed by the father to make sure his daughter is going to be took well taken care of. To make sure that his daughter is going to be well taken care of. And this is how we're supposed to teach our children. We had just showed you about we're supposed to teach them diligently. Now let me share with you in the book, in the point of vows, not book, but the point of vows and how this is to be done. This is only 16 verses. But let's get into it real quick. The, the law concerning vows. This is Deut Numbers chapter 30, but in the law concerning vows, there's lessons here. And Moses spake unto the heads of the, uh, of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which Yah has commanded, 
Verse 2. If a man bow a vow unto Yah or swear an oath to bind his soul with a, with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do accordingly to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. That means you should watch what you say. That's the whole key to a lot of this information. People need to watch what they say because your word is bond. Your word is a bond. Spiritually, but it's a bond. Verse 3. Uh-uh. If a yeah, okay. Verse 3. If a woman also, well, here we go. If a woman also buy a vow unto Yah and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house. Remember, I just tell you the, the children, <coughs> women should, should the women is supposed to be in their own house. Now let me let me get this straight real quick. <coughs> the men are supposed to teach the men how to be men. <coughs> teach the boys how to be men. <clears throat> teach them how to take care of themselves. Teach them how to get and build a home. Teach them how to get these things, do these things, so he can bring a woman to his home. When he bring a woman to the nest, the woman is supposed to take care of the nest for her, him, and their children. People don't understand this in this day and time because we got wild childs out here now. But let's keep it back moving. If a woman also vow and bow unto Yah and bound, bound and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, she's a young lady, a young damsel. Verse four, and her father hear her vow and her and her bond wherewith she had bound her soul, and her father shall hold, and her father shall hold his peace at her. Then all her vows shall stand. And every bond way she had bound, bound her soul to stand. That means y'all women only have so much power to what you do. If your father comes to you and tell you, no, you ain't doing that. No, I, you ain't doing that. Accept and honor his words. Verse five. But if her father disallow her in the day that he here, in the day that he hear it for the first time, in the day that he hear it, not, not any of her vows, nor of her band, band, bonds, wherewith she had bound herself, her soul, shall stand. And Yah shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. Father, have respect to the men. You got to understand that. He has respect for the men. Not saying he won't hear any women, but this is a woman being in her father's house. If she had at all, at, here you go. Excuse me. Verse six. If she had at all a husband, when she bowed or uttered all, all, out of her lips, where would she bow her soul? And her husband hear it and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it. Then her vow shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. That means if you say something, no, I ain't going to want you to do that. No, she even said it. You heard it. You ain't say nothing. It stands. Our people need to read and study. Verse 8. But if her husband disallow her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed and that and that which she uttered with her lips wherewith she bound her soul of non-effect and Yah shall forgive her. See that? Adam was first. <sighs> forgive me y'all. It's coming down on me. But every vow, verse 9, but every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their soul, shall stand against her, because she has no head. Divorced or widow has no head. You see that? Number 10. And if she bow in her, in her husband's house or bow her soul by a bond with an oath, 
And her husband heard it and held his peace at her and disallowed her not. Then all her vows should stand and every bond where was she bound, her soul should stand. But if her husband have utterly made them void on the day that he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows, or her concerning the bond, the bond of her soul, shall not stand. Neither, no, her husband has made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. Forgive me, I'm getting a little tired. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul her husband may establish. Every vow and every bind, binding oath to afflict the soul her father, her husband may establish it or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at, it, at, at her from the day, from day to day, then he establishes all her vows or at her bonds, which her which are upon her, he confirmed them because he held his peace. Excuse me, excuse me, y'all. Forgive me. He held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall in any ways make them void after that he had heard them, then he shall hear. He shall bear her iniquity. He shall bear her iniquity. Verse sixteen. These are the statutes which Yah commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between the father and his daughter, between yet in her youth, in her father's house. Y'all, I'm getting a little tired. But you have to understand what was said, how it was said, and what was made to be said. Other than that, I am getting tired. So I'm getting ready to call it right here. I ain't nobody had any more, but I did want to hit that mainly because all this goes into family structure. Trying to see if there's anything else that I may be leaving out. Not exactly. I'm going to read one more thing. One more thing. Family structure, last but not least. Get you on the only man. There we go. There we go. It's Daniel, Joel, Micah, Maka, Maka, my great grandmother used to call me that. Maka, and they say she said, "Get the phone." Here we go. Malachi, y'all, is where I was going. Malachi. I'm gonna go to two places, then we're done. Malachi three. Then I'm going into four. Malachi 3, verse 16. The final lot of the righteous and the wicked. Then we go into the coming day of Yah. Then they, verse Malachi 3, 16. Hmm. Malachi 3, 16. You like people like going math or uh, uh, John three sixteen. It's Matthew three sixteen. Malachi shall say three sixteen is a lot more potent to me. Then they that fear Yah spake often one unto another. They that fear Yah spake often one to another, and Yah hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear Yah. Okay, here we go. There we go. It is the middle of the night now. Not the beginning of the night or the next day. It's the middle of the night where we are. And here we go. The final of the, the final lot of the righteous and the wicked. Verse 16, Malachi 3, 16. 
Then they that fear Yah spake often one to another. One to another. And Yah hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear Yah and that thought upon his name. Verse 17. And they shall be mine, saith Yah, of hosts in that day when I make up my jewels. Mm -hmm. And I will spare him as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. See that? That serveth him. Verse 18. Then shall ye, you return and discern between the righteous. Uh huh. This is how you discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth Yah and him that serveth him not. The suffering servant, remember? The suffering servant is Israel, who choose not to keep the law, which is the which is the nation, and they went through the suffering, which we're coming out of today. Chapter four. The coming of the day of Yah. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the and the day that cometh shall burn them up, save Yah, of hopes, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Oh man, that's gonna be tore off from both ends. Verse 2. But unto you, this is Malachi 4 and 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings. Son of righteousness. The beams from the sun, which is really the glory of the anointed spirit. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the star. Verse 3. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. See that? In the day that I shall do this, save Yah. See, when it says ashes under the soles of your feet, it's talking about the authority you're going to have. Not actually putting your feet on them, but your authority you're going to have over them. Some people don't get that. Verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, verse 5, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yah. Verse 6 and last verse. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. I call that Kevin Samuel. He was one that did that in this day and time. The, and, he shall, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the father. Them children are those women. Those women who hated Samuel, Kevin Samuel for telling the truth. Breaking it down, giving them some understanding. I will say a little of that was his own agenda, just a little bit, but majority of that was of the father, as I shared with you earlier. <clears throat> it was his way of breaking it down and keeping control, but majority of that conversation was of the father, turning women back to who, they, who and where they're supposed to be, telling women how they should be living, or should I say, who should be teaching them how to be a wife which is their mother. And a lot of the mothers didn't know how to be wives. I'm at the end of it, might as well come on out. The reason why mothers had to know how to be wives, because <clears throat> they didn't know how to be a wife to their husband. Remember, the system put them out. The great red dragon, the system, would put the man out and had the women in the house unguarded. And the women have been bombarded and now they look at the system as their husband, not even knowing it. Because they run to the police when something happens. They don't run to their man, they run to the police. Mine, no, 
who the sheep to deal with. I don't have to worry about it. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, verse 4, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Yah. You see that? The great and dreadful day was happening while he was speaking. In this day and time. In this day and time. Verse 6 and last verse. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Mainly talking about the, these women out here. He was turning the women towards mainly the father, which is the word, and towards who they're supposed to be. And letting them know they're supposed to be women of marriage, which is keeping the household. Understanding who the man is. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. To me, that earth was smite with a curse with Jesus. But also, the curse was the corona. The corona. The virus of 2020. All right? Other than that, I thank y'all for your time, your patience, your listening ear, your seeing eye, and don't forget, this was Fight Fire with Truth, and this is, or should I say, I am that Mikael in Daniel chapter 12, verses 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's me. Showing the holy people who they're really supposed to be. Waking them out of their dead beds, which is really in their heads. For all of you who's living in the new, this is for you. I'm that same Mikael in Revelation 12, battling that red dragon where Satan dwells, who deceived the whole world but prevailed not, because the horn is blown without a doubt. This was prophesied for you to see that that Mikael is really me. Other than that, Smile, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Echai, Baruch, Shekevo, Vaku, To, Viola, Vahe, Hallelujah. Hero, Israel. Yah, our Father, is one Father. Blessed be thou, glorious kingdom, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Praise you, Almighty, for reading another word. Praise you for another beautiful day. I praise you for another beautiful night that's going into another beautiful day. I thank y'all. I appreciate you. I'll see you tomorrow, or shall I say, tomorrow night, and on Mikael's knowledge of truth. Other than that, I thank you for your time, your patience, your listening ear, your seeing that Zoom. Peace and love. Peace.